The Sked Stretcher rolls up and fits into a backpack, which is 8 inches in diameter and 3 feet long, and is secured with a strap fastened around its middle. It should always be stored in a pack with a strap around its middle to prevent it from unrolling and making it difficult to remove it from the bag. You now see the toe strap. The clips on the toe strap can break at about 300 pounds, so we do not lift anyone off the ground with this strap. It is strictly for towing. The size of the backpack is 8 inches in diameter and 3 feet long. One pouch is large enough to hold all accessories. The other pouch can remain empty or be used to hold a first aid kit or other necessary equipment. Two D-rings on the back can be used to send the pack down a line across a canyon or between two buildings. The backpack cannot twist up on the line due to the positions of these D-rings. The D-rings also create tie-in points if you are attaching to an existing backpack. The bottom D-ring can attach to the toe strap to drag the stretcher with the victim in it. This allows your hands to remain free. Four extra handles come with the stretcher and can be placed in any of the unused grommets, allowing the stretcher to be lifted by more than four persons. The stretcher already has four handles sewn on. The stretcher contains two lift slings or straps. One is seven feet long, one is six feet six inches long. The shorter sling is labeled plainly head strap, which when in place allows the stretcher to be hoisted in a horizontal position, but slightly head up, which is a very desirable position to lift the patient. The vertical lift sling is a 30-foot section of 3 8 inch static kern mantle rope, which is inserted in all the grommets to create the sling. We tie a figure 8 knot in the rope at the factory, which need never be removed. There is a large steel D-shaped locking carabiner provided. It is a large carabiner with a large gate opening and is designed to clip into all the lift sling loops or the rope. The nut screws downward, so vibration will not shake the nut loose, allowing the carabiner to open. Breaking strength of the carabiner is 9,000 pounds. stretcher. Take out the stiff neck collar. Remove the spine splint, then step on the bottom of the backpack and pull the stretcher out of the bag. Disconnect the retainer strap on the stretcher has a memory. It will want to roll up. Reverse roll it by standing on the foot of the stretcher and roll it back with one arm. Do the foot in the same way. The stretcher will then lay flat. Log roll the patient once again and pull the splint as close as possible to the patient. On the count of three, lower the patient as gently as possible. Move to the other side of the patient and move them gently to the center of the stretcher. Then apply the shoulder board, which will prevent the spine splint from compressing the spine. The top of the board should line up with the top of the patient's shoulders. Start at the bottom of the stretcher when fastening the straps and watch for kicking from a violent patient. Tighten the straps as snug as possible to create a tubular shape, which gives the stretcher its rigidity.
tuck all the strap ends into the stretcher so you do not trip on them during transport. Bring the bottom straps up through the unused grommets, creating a toboggan shape. Depending on the area the patient is to pass, the feet can be placed in several different positions displayed here. Splayed is shown here. between the foot straps. Crossed for confined space. To prepare for a lift, take the towing handle, tie an overhand knot to the strap in the waist area, and tuck the handle in so it does not hang up on anything. To do a vertical lift, take the 30-foot static rope and pass it through the grommet at the head end and through the grommet at the shoulder. Leave a foot or so of rope at the head end. Pass the rope through the handle and through the grommet at the waist. Pass it through the handle at the lower end and through the grommet at the lower end from the inside out. Do the same thing on the other side, leaving the same amount of rope at the head. Tie the rope at the bottom into a square knot. The two free ends are brought through the handles from the outside in, and we tie another square knot. Secure the ends of the rope with two half hitches on each end. Another option is a barrel knot or a double fisherman's knot. Then you clip the carabiner into the loop at the head of the stretcher after standing the stretcher up ready for the hoist. When removing the rope, be careful not to pull too quickly and allowing the ropes to whip around striking the patient creating possible minor injuries.
The extra handles can be placed in any of the unused grommets to allow more carriers. A six foot, six inch long head strap has a 10,000 pound tensile strength is inserted in the angle slots at the side of the stretcher. The shorter head strap allows a head up attitude while hoisting. Two end equalized. Do the same thing with the longer sling at the lower end. The carabiner is then threaded through the eyes of the hoist straps at the foot and head end. This gives us a one-point hookup. Lock the carabiner and make sure the nut screws downward. These instructions are general. Use of this equipment should be done in accordance with local medical protocol.